My name is Brian Ian, civil engineer by profession and from my experience I'm going to help you understand the most common mistakes in construction. You will also learn how to avoid these mistakes in construction or the correct version of what is supposed to be done. So be sure to watch this video till the end. Let's begin with the common mistakes in the foundation. A foundation is part of the structure system that supports the superstructure of the building and transmits loads directly to the earth. Common mistake number one is powering concrete in the foundation from a high rise or a high distance. When powering concrete, always ensure that the concrete pump or wheelbarrow is so close to where you are placing the concrete to a distance not more than 1 meter. When you power concrete for the base at a distance above 1 meter, it will cause segregation. Segregation of concrete is the separation of cement paste and aggregates of concrete from each other during handling and placement. Segregation reduces the strength of the concrete, therefore concrete should remain the same way as it is mixed from the batch plant to the concrete mixer truck to the pump until when it is placed on site. There should be no segregation so as to achieve maximum strength of the concrete. Common mistake number two is setting out an even foundation level. For example, if this is the sloping land, most masons or contractors put one base here, another one here, and another one here, and then this ground floor structure slab level here, plus other floors on top. Think about it. This makes the building more like a tipper truck and in case of an earthquake, this building is more likely to fall this side because of an uneven foundation. What is supposed to be done is that when the nature of the land is sloping, cut and dispose away this part to have a relatively flat area all around the site and excavate all pits all around the site to the same level. This way, the foundation will be stable enough since it's on the same level. Common mistake number three is a short or no development length for the footing hooks. Development length means this bar length that transfers load or stress from the steel bar to the concrete. What most steel fixers do is that they simply cut these steel bars like this and simply place them in the footing. The formula for determining the correct development length in the footing is LD equals 9DB. LD means the development length. 9 is a constant, db means the diameter of the bar. For example, if you are using a 16 mm bar in the base, the development length here will be ld equals 9 multiplied by 16 mm, which will give us 144 mm. Therefore, the cutting length here will be 145 mm. Therefore, instead of cutting a short hook for the footing, simply use the formula ld equals 9db to determine the required or appropriate development length. Common mistake number four is skipping anstamide treatment. Anstamide treatment is a chemical procedure carried out after excavating for the base. We treat the sides and bottom of the bases with an anstamide chemical below the plinth wall and after doing sand blinding before casting oversight concrete. The chemical is usually mixed with water, then sprayed at the bottom and sides of the pit after compaction before laying hardcore at this stage after sand blinding and also at the sides and bottom of the plinth wall here or any other place that has contact with the natural soil. Most builders or contractors ignore anti-termite treatment, then eventually after a few years the whole building is affected with termites. Therefore, never forget that. Common mistake number five is building foundations less than one meter. Most contractors or builders make a mistake of making these foundations less than 1 meter from the natural ground level to the bottom of the pit. And this is the correct version. For example, this footing is meant for 3 floors and it is 1.5 meters up the natural ground level and 1 meter 750 millimeters up the ground floor structure slab level. This is 50 millimeters concrete blinding here. 50mm spacer blocks for both sides and bottom. These are H12 bottom bars for the footing and H12 top bars for the footing also. This part here is filled with well compacted maram. This is the ground beam that is at the same level as hard core. At this stage here, you can either use hard core or stone base, which is also called base coat. This is a construction joint. You can put a kicker here. These are column starter bars. The point I'm trying to elaborate here is that always ensure that the foundation height is above 1 meter from the natural ground up to the bottom of the base. Common mistake number 6 is making the ground floor structure slab level completely unrelated to the road level. The mistake that most contractors make is making this ground floor structure slab level either way too high or way too low as compared to the road level, which makes access to the building difficult. What is supposed to be done is that when the nature of the land 
is a slope and let's say you want to position your building here. Cut this area and dispose away this soil. Finally, this ground floor structure slab level will be relative to the road level. When the nature of the land is a slope and you want to position your building here, cut maram from some other place and fill it here. Then position your building here so that this ground floor structure slab level will be relative to the road level so as to make access to the building easy. Also remember that the height of the plinth wall should be between 600 mm to 800 mm. We make it to this height so as to protect the house from running water and also to protect the house from damp which might affect the walls. There are four from this natural earth ground level to the damp roof course it will be between 600 mm to 800 mm. Any height less than 600 mm is a mistake. Common mistake number 7 is casting concrete for the ground floor structure slab level less than 25 mm or less than 1 inch. All DPC concrete or ground floor structure slab level or oversight concrete should be more than 25 mm or more than 1 inch. Usually, the thickness of this concrete varies for different purposes. For example, for a simple Bangalore residential house, you could make it 25 mm. Then for a three-storied apartment, you could make it 100 mm as there isn't a lot of activity going to take place on this floor. Then for classrooms, churches, dance hall clubs, cinema halls, concert halls, the gauge for this ground floor structure slab level should be around or at least 150 mm because there is a lot of activity going to take place on this ground floor structure slab. Then for factories and any other heavy machinery industries, this ground floor structure slab level should be above 200 mm because a lot of activity will be taking place on this ground floor structure slab here. Common mistake number 8 is setting up high-rise buildings before determining the soil bearing capacity. Bearing capacity of the soil is the capacity or ability of the soil to support the applied load. Different soils in different places have different bearing capacities. For example, for soft weight clay or muddy soils, compact clay soils, soft clay soils among other types of soils have different bearing capacities but to simplify things the bearing capacity of soil should not be less than the required design load because it will fail after some time due to settlement. For example, if the soil bearing capacity is 5000 kg per meter squared and the design load is 10000 kg per meter squared, this building will fail or fall because the design load is higher than the soil bearing capacity. The factor of safety is 1.5. Therefore, since the design load is 10000 kg per meter squared, 15000 is the safe soil bearing capacity. And this is safe because 15,000 divided by 10,000 will give us 1.5 which is the factor of safety. There are a number of tests that can be done to determine the bearing capacity of the soil including the plate bearing tests, the penetration tests, the presumption analysis, centrifuge tests, analytical method presumption analysis among others. Any of these tests will help you determine the soil bearing capacity. Therefore, before investing a lot of money in building a high-rise structure, hire a professional engineer to determine the bearing capacity of the soil before raising the building to avoid the risk of the building falling due to a low soil bearing capacity. Common mistake number 9 is using the wrong class of cement at different stages in construction. Concrete and mortar can withstand high compressive loads in it due to the class of cement used in the mixture. There are three main strength classes of cement that is 32.5, 42.5 and 52.5 followed by an R O N. R refers to the rapid or early strength development and N refers to normal or standard strength development. While 32.5 is of low strength, 42.5 is of middle strength, 52.5 is of higher strength. When choosing the right class of cement to use for your project, you have to keep in mind that the compressive strength reached by 42.5 N and 42.5 R will be the same once completely cured. However, 42.5 R will reach a higher initial compressive strength as it is for all classes. Class 32.5 is typically used in application where initial strength is not so much needed. For example, in masonry brickwork or blockwork, plastering, cement sand script for flooring and general work in bungalow houses. Class 42.5 is typically used in applications that require compression strength of concrete to exceed 30 newtons after the compression strength test. 
and is needed when mixing concrete for all structure work that is pads or footings, columns, beams, staircases, the lift shear wall, slabs among others. Class 52.5 is used for structures where high initial compressive strength is required. For example, when building heavy structures, building columns in waterlogged areas, building retaining walls in waterlogged areas, terrazzo flooring for areas where high activity will be taking place, building bridges in road construction among others. Therefore, the mistake that most contractors do is that they just buy any kind of cement they find on the market and end up using cement of class 32.5 even in beams, columns, slabs, staircases, which is wrong. For example, on this building here, we use cement of class 42.5 in the bases for columns for all slabs in the staircases and the lift shaft wall. Then we use cement of class 32.5 to build these walls to do plastering plus other simple works on site. Common mistake number 10 is laying hardcore at this stage wrongly. After compacting this maram with a jumper, do not place this hardcore sleeping like this. Always place hardcore while standing so as to evenly spread the imposed loads and also to achieve maximum strength. If this is the shape of your hardcore, do not place it like this. Always place it like this, then plus other small pieces on top. And lastly, do not use this size of hardcore at this stage. Use this medium sized hardcore because that is when maximum strength is achieved. In summary, the most common mistakes in construction and specifically in the foundation are powering concrete in the foundation from a high distance or a high rise, setting out the foundation at different levels, short or no development length for the footing hooks, skipping and termite treatment, building foundations less than one meter, making ground floor structure slab completely unrelated to the road level, dump of coarse concrete or oversized concrete less than 25 millimeters, building high rise structures before determining the soil bearing capacity, using the wrong type of cement and laying hardcore wrongly. I gave the correct version of what is supposed to be done for each of the above. In case you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comment section. I will answer all your questions immediately. That's the end of part 1 about the common mistakes in construction. Be sure to watch this next video on the right about the common mistakes in the columns and how to avoid them. Thank you so much for watching.